Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, I will be showing you a hilarious game of chess. This game of chess was played by two 800 level players, and it featured one of the most titanic back and forth struggles that I have ever seen. It featured drama, it featured chaos, it featured unpredictable moves left and right, and the end will have you laughing and crying at the same time. Without further ado, let's jump into this thing. Now, if you're lucky enough to be watching this game in the first few days uh, of this video coming out, you know that we're in the middle of the World Chess Championship 2023. Now, this is obviously quite a bit different from the World Chess Championship, but the funny thing is, more people are watching noobs play chess nowadays than they watch the top players. It's kind of crazy. I guess watching games like this, we see ourselves on the screen and we have a great time. Um, I've changed the players' names, but our protagonist was with white is a, a salty fish and uh, is uh, from Brazil. And the person playing with the black piece is from the Philippines. And um, this... Uh, <laughs> buckle up. <laughs> this is... Uh, Oh my goodness, this game is absolutely unbelievable. So, white starts with e4, all right? And black starts with e5. Uh, white plays knight f3, natural move, uh, attacking the pawn. Uh, and black plays knight c6. Uh, and white plays uh, bishop c4. Now, the players are playing 15-10, all right? It's a very long time control. It's 15 minutes per player, and every time you make a move, uh, you gain 10 seconds. I mean, it could go a very long time. And generally, I say that if you want to improve at chess, you should play 10-minute games or 15-minute games or 30-minute games. Uh, black here, uh, like I said, the game on, by move three, like, this is it, all right? Take a picture, because it's only going to get worse from here. Like, this is, we're going on vacation, and this is the one day we had of sunlight, and the rest of it is thunderstorm. So take a picture right now. Everybody take a deep breath. Everybody get ready. Sit back. I'm going to take a little sip of coffee, and then we're going to jump into this absolute pandemonium. No, but I, that is not an exaggeration, by the way. Um, take a deep breath. A little meditation. Are you ready? Okay. Black plays knight d4. Knight d4 is the Blackburn shilling gambit. It's a very high risk, high reward opening. Why is it high reward? Uh, because you are essentially only relying on your opponent taking on e5 which lands the opponent in a very dangerous position right away. And that's exactly what happens in the game. And then there's a very long trap here. Knight f7, queen g2, rook f1, queen e4 check. And to not lose your queen, you do this and you get mated. That's the trap. Uh, why is this high risk? Because unless white falls into the trap, like if white falls into the trap, they lose. If they play any other move, they probably don't lose. So that's why it's high risk, high reward. It's an opening that works. I mean, it could work in speed games for a while, but beyond that, it won't. White can castle. White can play pawn c3, knight c3. White can even take the knight and your whole trap is gone. Now it just castles. But in this game, white does in fact fall for the trap. And that's how you know this is going to be a very fun game. The game obviously did not end in seven moves. Um, but black played queen g5. Okay, this is very bad. Uh, white is hanging here, and white is hanging here. Now, had white played knight f7, 100% certainty that after queen g2, white would have fallen for the full mate. Because it's very natural, because you're like, oh, I don't want to lose my queen, duh, and then you get hit with this. And that's very humbling. That's very humbling. Um, that's really brutal. But in this game, white thought for a little bit and decided... Well, I'm not going to play knight f7, but I will play knight back to f3. Now, black is completely winning. Because, of course, if you fall for the Blackburn shilling, you're probably going to lose. That move doesn't look, uh, lose in the, most, uh, in the same exact fashion. But uh, black here completely disregards this. White played this move thinking, oh, knight takes, queen takes, and I'm happy. But it's not checkers. After knight f3, I don't have to go here, queen g2... And now it's really bad because I'm attacking this and this. And white is completely lost. Uh, white is completely lost because there is knight takes d4, queen takes h1 check. And now white really should block the check. White should block the check because if you don't block the check and instead you go king e2, you've got to think what can your opponent do here to make things very unpleasant for you. 
Queen e4 check is not only winning a pawn, it's forcing the king to go to f1. And uh, by move 8 of this game, black has a 6-point material advantage. That's tough. This, this video is only about 5 minutes old, and white has lost half their pieces. Now, this happens, okay? White did not do... Th this game thus far has nothing to do with either of these players' actual chess skills. It just has to do with the fact that black knew an opening trap, and white didn't. I mean, and, and this is how you improve a chess. I mean, you get caught with stuff like this, and then you get better. But as you know, this is a how to lose a chess episode, so you have absolutely no idea what the hell is going to happen in this game. I mean, that's just the reality. We have no clue. So white plays the move d3. All right, now how does white, how should white play here? White should, this is a great move. Now white should play knight c3, bishop e3, get both pieces out, and then bring the queen and the rook. Really, the only way you're going to make a comeback here on black is to create counterplay on the king or the queen since the queen is in the center. So knight c3, bishop e3, or check. Uh, black here plays the best move, which is d5. That's just a great move. It attacks the bishop. The bishop is coming out. If I'm playing with black, I consolidate. I castle quickly, and I just maintain my rook extra material advantage. Now, what white should do is, of course, get out of the way, and then knight c3, bishop e3, and so on. Unfortunately, white's bad luck in this game really did not ever stop. And here, white played the move bishop e3. And White played that move extremely quickly. I mean, if you look at the time spent, if you subtract 10 seconds from this, yeah, White spent 7 seconds on this move. White has 14 minutes on the clock. Y'all gotta stop doing this. You create these problems for yourselves. All right, let this be a public service announcement. Listen to me and stop making this chess mistake. You have 14 minutes on the clock. You spend seven seconds on this move. And now this. And you lose a rook. Why? If you want to play that fast, start a bullet game. Okay? You want to last a minute? Don't play chess. There's other ways to do that. Queen takes a1. It's not good. And that's exactly what happens in this game. Bishop e3 blunders the pawn. And now you've got a hanging rook and a hanging bishop. And you're, that's it. Now, which one of them should you save? Of course, you should save the bishop. But bishop d5, queen a1. 11 moves have gone by. Black is up 11 points of material. Just with the queen. Black has not moved any of this. Any, anything. The queen has just taken everything. And this opening has a lot less to do with the fact that it's like, oh, the queen is getting it. No. You just fell for an opening trap, and then you made multiple blunders. That, that's really it. I mean, it, it's not like the queen took all your pieces. You facilitated that. Chess players make this mistake all the time. They have no idea how to analyze their games. They look at a game like this, and they go, Oh, the queen came out, and I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. The queen just took all my pieces. And, but by the way, that queen actually, yeah. No, no. It, chess players punch themselves in the face repeatedly, and then cry about having a black eye. Really, it just... You are creating these problems for yourself. It's nobody's fault but your own. The fact that black took all your pieces with the queen has nothing to do with you being bad at dealing with queen attacks. It has to do with the fact that you don't respect your own pieces. It has to do with the fact that the queen is just standing around and you're going, me attack queen! And then it goes here and you go, me take pawn! And then this, and you go, me move! And then you lose the, like, what are you doing? Respect your pieces. It's move 12. You're down 14 points of material. You lost all your pieces by the 12th move. Why are you playing like this? Now, by the way, yes, all of that happened. Queen a1, queen f3, queen b1. Now, of, I mean, like, of course, in this position, uh, you should not be hanging your knight. There is one very, very sneaky move here that I would recommend to newbies. It's to line the queen up on the king with queen e1. This is an extremely, extremely sneaky idea. And the point is that after something like, let's say, knight f6, uh, you have bishop d4, and it's a discovered check, and you win the queen, which is very nice. And yet you're still losing, but at least you win a queen. In the game, unfortunately, that doesn't happen. And now this, okay? Now, black, of course, should take yet another pawn because it's check, be up 15 points of material, and then defend themselves. 
Now here, Black does something a bit weird. I couldn't tell if this was a mouse slip or what happened here. Um, at, at some point, you need to pause with Black and you need to go, okay, White still has three pieces remaining. Of course, if you manage to trade the queens, you win because the bishops cannot do anything to you. For now, you know, if you allow queen f7, it could get very, very unpleasant. Uh, so you need to find a way to defend yourself. You can play bishop e6, for example, which trades bishops, and the more pieces that get traded, the better it will be. Instead of bishop 2e6, uh, you can also play knight f6. You can probably even play, you get away with playing knight h6. You can play pawn to f6. You probably shouldn't move your king. And like, black thought about this move, okay? Like, look at this. Black actually spent a lot of time on that move. Just a good rule of thumb in chess is if you are up a lot of material, you should probably find a way to utilize that material. So if you're up a knight, a rook, like you, you got to find a way to get the pieces in the game. Otherwise, you just have nice things and they're not very useful. Like buying a luxury car. It has no wheels, it has no engine, but you still try to show it off in your garage. It's just a bunch of metal, and it might be kind of colorful. Sounds like the average dude in Miami. King d8. Not a good move, because queen f7. Now, of course, black is still completely winning. Uh, and in fact, black finds this move. Very nice. And now we have king f3. Uh, the game is completely over. Uh, just black needs to pause here and very quickly analyze, is there any threat? Black does see that and actually plays knight e7. I would prefer a little bit more aggressive, but okay, knight e7. Now the bishop is defended by the rook. And I, I mean, you're obviously, I don't know, I don't know what's going through your head right now, but I, I'm sure you're probably very rapidly losing hope in the fact that uh, anything happens in this game. Well, at this point, uh, I think white starts using the strategy of when in doubt, run the king up the board. White plays the move king f4. By the way, can we address the fact that it's move 16? And both players have 14 and a half minutes on the clock. I don't understand why people boot up 15 minute games. Now, black, very accurate move, snaps off the bishop. Fantastic. Now white has two pieces remaining. Queen and bishop versus queen and bishop and another bishop and, an, and two more rooks and five pawns. What do you do here if you're black? You just block the check. In fact, you can block the check and give a check. And then you seize back all of the initiative, and the game is over. There is now officially an M on the evaluation, like a BMW. So instead of that, we have bishop d7, absolutely reasonable move, king to e5, and that's it. Black is just moments away from winning this game, and nothing spectacular happens whatsoever. One more rule. One more... Just a piece of advice, let's put it this way. Just a piece of advice... For the chess fans, if you are up a lot of material and your opponent's king is in the center, try to make every move a check. Just try to give a few checks. Bishop d6, because you never know. At some point, someone is going to accidentally walk into a checkmate somehow. All right? Or they're going to lose their queen. Instead of that, black plays queen c5. Now, you may ask yourself why I'm so upset. Because the eval, nothing happened to the evaluation. <laughs> well, black found a way to lose a queen. Black just lost the queen. Just, just lost the queen. Just queen c5, bishop takes, and it's still lost, okay? It, it, like, it's still two rooks and a bishop versus a queen is winning. But it's so hard to play against the queen because the queen just fires away into your position. And it goes from bad to worse because black gives this check now. And now it's take, take. And the white king has arrived to the other side of the board. Now the queen can come in here. The queen can give a check. The queen e5, queen e5. Now what black needs to do is use the rooks. You have rooks. Bring the rooks. Excellent move. Excellent move. We have queen takes b7. Hitting here. Now black needs to give a check. And then bring the rook. Give a check. Kick the king out. Bring the rook. It's okay to lose a pawn because now you're all coordinated. Your king is safe. And you are going to take pawns. You are winning, but it's tricky. You are winning, but it's tricky. Okay, we have rook f5 check. King goes back to d6. Rook f6 check. And now black plays rook c. That is sensational stuff. 
That is absolutely awesome. Black is now bringing the second rook. Queen takes a7. All right. Oh, I'm nervous because, uh, I mean, white is, white is, uh, is still not in any sort of shape to be calling the shots here, but at least white has a pawn now, and white starts using the pawn. That's all white's got, all right? Black gives a check, king goes back, now black takes on f2, all right? Gives a little, nice little check there, takes on f2, white's pawns are quickly falling, rook h2, rook a2, and then black will bring these pieces and promote. That is the way you win this. But white is not going to go down without a fight. Pawn to a4, all right? Black takes another pawn. White is down to a queen and two pawns. Surely nothing is going to happen, right? King e5, h5. There goes black trying to push the pawns. There we go. Pawn to d5 getting a little bit closer, but the king is completely safe. And the king cannot cross. Of course, white can find a way to give a mate, but, you know, if you're careful, you'll be fine. Rookie to check, well-timed. King d4, and look at black. Pawn to h4. The pawn is now three squares away from queening. It is all but over. Queen a6. Oh, no. Oh, here it comes. Black is going to lose. The no. King e5. Pawn to... Wait, this is nuts. This is absolutely insane. Black is going to make a queen. Now, you may wonder why it says draw. It's because queen d6. Of course, that doesn't happen. I mean, of course, it doesn't happen. Evaluation falls off a cliff. White is up to 16 minutes on time, by the way, in a 15-minute game with 10 seconds bonus. D6 check. And Black now has a choice of four moves. Three of these moves win the game. One of these moves throws the game. 25% chance throw, 75% chance win. White is eight. E White is 800 ELO. So what's gonna happen? Huh? I'm gonna close my eyes. Oh no. Oh no. White blunders. Queen A5. Check. No. No. <laughs> Not the rook. Not the rook now, by some miracle of the chess gods, this position is still equal. This position is still equal because the rook and the bishop are so strong and they support this pawn. And if black is able to run and hide, okay, we lost the rook, but it's fine. We lost a valiant soldier, completely fine. We'll, we'll be okay. We're going to survive this, all right? Rook c5 check, all right? King goes back to d4. Nice. Rook h5. No. No. Oh my god. No. <laughs> Not the other rook. Not the other rook. Okay, maybe we still can defend her. Maybe white takes their eye off the ball and the pawn promotes. Both rooks have fallen. Oh, black doesn't know what to do, so they take a pawn. And the queen Forks the king on the same square. And black lost both rooks and the, and the bishop in the span of two moves, three moves. Fork followed by fork followed by... No.